Hey folks, I'm John B. And I'm Callie Lewis. Today on Geek Beat Live, a change of scenery. More hacks than you can shake a stick at. How to control another human's brain. Time Warner does something, eh. An android is dangerous! It all starts now. <laughs> different spot than normal as you can see very very different we went from one waterlogged spot to, to another. another slightly better though i gotta admit why are you splashing yourself because i can <laughs> does it feel good it does it feels good doesn't it yes <laughs> not many people get to go to work in the swimming pool people. that is true we are having a blast uh and we have our tablets we have two tablets each, yep. and they are um, in lock sack bags to protect them from the water, so we can be techie in the pool. And okay, so why are we here? The whole reason that we're actually in the pool is because, if you're not aware, early, late Our last office was week, destroyed. We had a flood, and so we had to vacate the premises. They're still doing cleanup and all of that stuff, cleaning the carpets. So we decided to do the show from here. Luckily, the broadcast equipment was safe, so we're yes. able to, uh, you know, take our roadshow equipment, the roadshow rig that we would normally use if we went, you know, yeah. to do a conference or something, and we set it up at the pool. Yeah, this is so, your pool. Yeah, this is this is this is the section of my pool. I don't know, maybe yeah. maybe, maybe later you, you can uh, get paint. more of the pool yeah. or something. But we are in the pool because we figured, what the heck. We got water at the office. We might as well have water for the uh, live show. Exactly. Now, Digital Phil is actually saying in the chat room um, that this is working better than expected. Did you guys have no faith? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. It's hot out here, though. I'm going to tell it's you right hot. now. I'm not going to lie. It's like 102 degrees. It's Texas. <laughs> yeah. But we have water, so it doesn't really, really <laughs> matter. <sighs> Are you going to be able to see out of your glasses now? Yeah. So, in the past, a, a few weeks ago, I don't know, a month ago, I got my new stand-up paddleboard. You did. It's called a Nash. No, it, that's actually pronounced Nash. Nash. Nash, like cash. Nash. Which it costs a lot of cash. <laughs> that was expensive. This is um, a stand-up paddleboard, if you're not familiar with what that is, is basically I stand up on it, and my paddle only has one oar on the end, and you go like this, and you just paddle. So how hard is it to stand on? It's not hard at all. You so, think I could just stand up on it? Yes, you could. So paddle boards actually range from like 26 at the very uh, lowest width to like 34 is uh -huh. the biggest I've seen. And how big is this one? This one is 30, so it's right in the That's middle. That's pretty big, right? It's not, well, That's so- That's what she said. Oh, geez. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so actually, um, if you get into stand-up paddle boarding, like right, just just wanting to get started, uh -huh. you're usually on a 33 inch uh -huh. board. And how big and you say this was? Very, 30. And that's very stable. This is 30. It's very stable. This costs a lot because it can go over waves like nothing else I've ridden. Huh. And it can and it's very, very stable. I can do yoga on it. Yeah. I can do exercises. I don't um, want to do yoga or I exercises. Can paddle. It just is a beautiful board. Anyway, that's the Nash Nalu G S eleven four. It's eleven foot four inches. Ah, I see. So that's that's what my board looks like. Does Everybody's it get to float asking, free now? What's going on? What's your pool? Oh doing? the pump the pool pump came on. <laughs> the pool pump came on. Yes, can you guys hear it? The board it? can go away now. The board can float free. All right, it's going to float free. But what if I let it fro float free and it hits the side of the pool? Then you're going to kill then me. Then I will get mad at you. Pablo, take care of that. There we go. It'll just float <laughs> over there. It's going. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, board. What else? What else happened this um, week? Well, so people are still asking for status updates. Oh, as, yeah. As best as we can tell you right now, they are actually meeting with the cleaning crew to uh, work out the details of cleaning the carpets. We'll see how that goes. It still stinks in there. Yeah, right now they are cleaning our carpets most likely and painting the walls. Yep. It's amazing because they had machines in there all week to dry it, dehumidify it and all that stuff. They had to punch a bunch of holes in the walls in order to blow air into the walls to drought the uh, 
uh, what do you call it? Sheetrock. Sheetrock. And uh, that's pretty dry as far as we can tell. Yeah. They were carrying just buckets of water out from the dehumidifier machines. Yeah. And amazingly, they dried the whole thing out in about a week. And, and now that it's dry, they claim that they're going to get every, all the sheetrock and carpet cleaned and painting done in like two days. Yeah. And we could potentially be back in the studio next week, which is great. Now, we'll see. we did have some equipment damage. I'm not going to lie to you. So that will take a little longer to replace some of the things that we use. Um, we have to order them like weeks in advance of even getting them. Yeah. But hey, that's okay. We clearly have enough to do this kind of stuff. So we should be good. Right. Okay. Well, uh, just a couple quick uh, answers to questions in the chat room about uh -huh. the board. We're going back oh, in yeah. time. Um, where do I use it? Here we have a lot of lakes yeah. around Dallas. So I take it out on flat water lakes um, and the boats. They they create a lot of waves, so I get to have some fun there. Yeah. Um, we have to pause for the overhead jet. Yes, jet. Okay, I don't remember what other, what other questions there were. There were some, but uh, I'll answer those during commercial break. Right now, we're going to go to commercial break. What's the fame spot question of the day? Uh, do you know how to swim? Ah, that's the fame spot really? question today. Sure, why not? Really? For now, for now it is. You can answer that one by going to geekbeat.tv forward slash fame spot. And we'll be right back. What's up, people? Welcome back to Geek Beat Live right here on the live set in the pool. You know the things I concern myself with during a commercial break? Your hair. Well, that too. But the fact that I didn't like do anything to my feet and it's in your shot, it's in your close-up shot and I'm oh. very upset by that. Way to go. <laughs> All right, but more important things in the world are happening, so let's talk news. It is news time. Uh, and... Syria. No, obviously. not Syria. Go ahead. Okay, go. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> the Syrian no. electronic army. Well, what I was going to say, if you oh, would okay, let sorry. me finish, okay. is Syria, there's a lot going on there. The shizzle's going down? No. The shizzle is going down. Can I say that? I, you just did. <laughs> yeah, we're on cable. You can say whatever you want. So, yeah, a lot of things are happening there, um, which isn't what we're going to be talking about, but. Go for it. The Syrian electronic army hacked the heck out of the New York Times and Twitter. Yes, well the New York Times was actually talking, like doing stories on them and the Syrian Gee, go figure, situation. it's news. I mean, news, right? So I guess um, the Syrian electronic army decided, the SEA, decided to uh, just take their anger out at the New York Times. I think it was just another hacking a high profile site. They were just able to do it, so they did. did. And yeah. basically the way they did it was through a a human attack, not a systems attack. They found some guy like in Australia who had access to their uh, to their domain registry, right. and then they got him to give them the password. Wow. Hello, <laughs> uh, you're fired. Um, yeah. And anyway, so then they kind of took it over, and then they pointed the New York Times' website to their own website. Mm -hmm. But that only lasted for a few hours because the, as you can imagine, the New York Times has a little bit of power. A little bit of pull with the ICANN or whoever the registry is, yep. and they got it all sorted out. Yeah. But uh, Twitter also supposedly got comp compromised. Twitter's but they always getting compromised, yeah, isn't it, is. it? But they didn't take it down. What they did was they like changed a bunch of people's background uh, uh, images to be something like Syrian Electronic Army ish nice. or something. Anyway, so hopefully you're paying attention to your own Twitter account and not logging in once a month because if you do, you know, things like that can happen. Uh, by the way, I've been getting hit with a lot of Twitter spam lately. So Have you? be sure you're not getting hacked. Yeah. All right. Okay. Next up. This next story is my favorite. This is just like rumor mill. It's my favorite story of the day. So we'll tell you, first we'll tell you the actual news part, then I'll give you the juicy part. Really? Go ahead, tell them the news part. All right, well, so, um, Barra, uh, I'm sorry, um, and Andy Rubin, obviously, he was like kind of the 
father of Android. He left a while back ago, I think last year, uh -huh. from Google. Um, now then, the VP of Android Project Management. Which is a big deal. Yes, very big deal. Hugo Barra, I, I think it's Barra. Yeah. He's, he's kind of the guy, ch take a look at this picture. He's the guy that you've seen if you've watched any Android events or whatever. He's been kind of the face of Android lately. Uh -huh. Well, he is leaving Google to go work for Xiaocom, Xiaomi. Zio, in China, which is an up-and-coming manufacturer for phones, for Android phones. So he's staying within the Android ecosystem. And the big rumor deal is that they are saying that he is leaving because... I was supposed to get to tell that part. Oh, I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Well, I wouldn't want to take away your glory of getting to the relationship rumor mill. Here's the this deal, like okay? This is like Hollywood. He was going out with the lady who's like the senior VP of marketing. And all of a sudden, oh yeah, and Sergey Brin is like... If you don't know the name Sergey Brin, he's the, one of the co-founders of Google. He's the big shot. He like left his wife, and the next thing you know, he's going out with the chick who's the SVP of marketing, and then her old boyfriend, this guy, is moving to China and quitting the company. Gee, wonder why. Now, when every... your girlfriend starts going out with the boss, you really don't have much of a future in the company. You might as well get the hell out. Well, according to uh, Google, I think they released an official statement or somewhat official. Uh -huh. He resigned before this all went down. Whatever. <laughs> oh my God. Moving on to the next story. What is the next story? Uh, okay, so Android has, oh yeah, Android um, is dangerous, is what I said in the teaser. Oh yeah, it's well, gonna kill us all? Turns out that like the, your feder robots? The, fe yes. the federal government has determined that um, Android is responsible for 79% of mobile malware, which isn't a surprise. I mean, iOS is like point something, or like 6% or, yeah, 0.7%, 0.07%. Which is tiny, but that's because Apple keeps everything kind of locked down and they don't allow anybody to upload anything that that they haven't checked. So and I mean, Android is an open system and it's going to have a little bit more potential for malware. And I mean, of course we all trust the federal government. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know. funny thing is, is that the, the this stat, the 79% stat from the federal government is actually lower than third party sources say. I see. Interesting stuff. That is very it interesting. You know what? It doesn't as, really affect. Uh, that is very interesting, we said, as we read from our Android tablets. Right. It doesn't really affect what you should or shouldn't, you know, whether you should or shouldn't buy an Android tablet. The thing is, you always need to verify what you're downloading. Don't just download something without looking at the permissions. Make sure it's not doing stuff that shouldn't be, like asking for your contacts if it has nothing to do with contact. When it's a photo app and it wants access to your entire free Friend network, your your credit card information, and your social security number. You may want to worry about that a yeah. little. Just be more vigilant. That's all. Speaking of software that is just going rogue, they are not going to allow that in New Zealand anymore. Patents specifically. They said no more software patents. Screw you to software patents. That's this. That's what they say in New Zealand. And here I was all this time. You know, our you friend move to, Trey moved to yeah. New Zealand, and Trey's all like Zen-like and stuff. And here are all these New Zealanders going, "Screw you, man!" Uh, you thought everybody in New Zealand was like Trey? I thought they were all laid back, and that's why uh, Trey moved there. Well, but so I guess not because they do not like patent trolls at all. So much so that they said, "You know what? We're not even going to allow software patents anymore. There's not any enforcement of it or anything else." So. Eh, that's for you, patent trolls. Now, if it doesn't hold true to past patents, if you already have gotten one for software, you're fine. Mm -hmm. But um, also, the language is such that if you are producing software that is a new 
system, a new way of doing things, and the software is just supporting that way of doing things, and you want to patent that, that's okay. So you can patent processes, but Correct. you can't pro patent the system. Exactly. I mean, the, the code. The kind code of thing. itself, yeah. Well, I think that's a pretty good uh, plan. And so did we change our fame spot question of the day, or are we uh, still sticking with no, can you swim? No, no. I do want to know if you can swim. Okay. That's important to know, and many, many people cannot swim. So okay. I will amend it to say, not only can you swim, when did you learn to swim? Ah, uh, when did you as learn to swim? As a child, as an adult? Well, my mother threw me in the water the moment I was born. I yeah. think she was trying to drown me, to be <laughs> honest. So I, I've been a swimmer for a long time. I, I was swimming from early, early, early on too. Anyway, all yeah. right. You guys go to geekbeat.tv slash fame spot and submit your question, or your, your answer, your not question, because we just asked you. Well, you could ask us a question too. You could. Why not? Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm John P. Uh, we are still in the pool, obviously. Why wouldn't we be in the pool? Why wouldn't we be? It is hot out here. It's like 104 degrees, I think. I'm thinking how we much, should... How, how hot is it? 101? I think it's 103. Oh. CJ says 103 in his car oh, okay. right now, which means CJ is driving around while watching the show in his car. And CJ, we do not approve, but we're glad you're here. Yeah, I approve wholeheartedly. <laughs> I would do it. Why not? Don't we all do that? We, we That's want right. you to be safe, guys. I think that wherever you are, you should be watching Geek Beat Live, even if you're on the toilet, if you're driving around. If you're in space, yes. I don't care. You can watch, watch either Geek Beat or geekbeat.tv, I mean the live show. And you guys who are watching on cable, uh, you, you, can, you can... You can still come join us on geekbeat.tv forward slash live and chat with all of us, hey, the anytime. whole community, anytime you want. 24-7. You can. People are around. There are I haven't actually there. logged in at like 3 a.m., but I'm sure somebody's there. I have. I'm sure you have. Is I it have. gadget time yet? It's gadget time. <laughs> Um, I and it's airplane talk time. Over the That's okay, you can hear us. Okay. So, uh, this week the big news was that in Nintendo went backwards in time. They launched the Nintendo 2DS. Yeah, so, didn't they already release the 3DS? They did. They released the 3DS, and now mm. they've released the 2DS. This is like the 3DS, except it's not 3D. Except it, it's not as good. <laughs> in related news, Microsoft has announced the release of Windows 7. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, no, not really. Okay. No, so this is actually, it looks to me like it's meant more for kids. It's basically the Nintendo 3DS, but without the 3D, it's just 2D. Yeah, and it doesn't flip open. It's yeah. just one piece, as you see in the video. Um, so this is kind of more rugged. Uh, it uh, will ship October 12th for 129 The 3DS is 169 for comparison's sake. And um, it comes with a 4 gig uh, SD card. So, you know, if you have kids who are interested in gaming and you kind of like the idea of the 3DS, but you don't want to pay that much or you feel like they may just destroy it, get the 2DS. Or you're thinking, I don't want my kids to be cross-eyed for the rest of their life staring at 3D. Well, now oh, you can just get the 2D version. Speaking of which, the funny thing is, is you can actually get the, you can actually take like 3D pictures on the 2D. You just can't display them. Oh, on nice. Them. So you have to transfer that over to the 3DS. Nice. <laughs> It's kind of like in the olden days when you could take photos and not be able to see them instantly. Exactly. Remember that? Yeah, mm. I do remember wow, that. Wow, we are no, really wait. going way back in time. I don't remember that. Speaking, I'm too young for that. Speaking of moving backwards, Apple has uh, updated the Apple TV and they've given it some new features, yeah. including the ability to completely block Plex. Ah. Uh. What? So here's the deal. Uh, the Apple TV has just added some, some channels. They've added a video music service. That sounds cool. Yeah. Now, I wish it could be like the old VH1. Do you remember, or MTV, do you remember when MTV actually stood for music television? <laughs> you could watch kids. You could watch music videos on MTV. You mean like you do on YouTube? I know it's hard to believe. Yes. Anyway, uh, Apple TV is going to have a music channel. Uh, they're also going to have the weather channel because, you know, everybody needs to stare at the weather all day. They're going to have a Smithsonian channel, a Disney channel, and... Well, Disney makes perfect sense because, hey, relationship, Apple, Disney... Sure, sure. Now, the important thing to note is that if you make this update and you are a Plex user, Plex Connect 
which was an option that allowed you to show your Plex movies yeah. on your Apple TV. It took advantage basically of kind of a little hack. And uh, yeah, they fixed the hole. Yeah. They fixed the glitch. They fixed the they, they, oh, did they already work oh, around? Oh, already work Kim around. says, don't worry, they already worked oh, around it again. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Never mind. Never Go mind. ahead and make your little Apple TV update. <laughs> we just don't care. Well, uh, it's in another other hack to the news, rescue. Go ahead. Time what? Warner Cable. Not that I really want to get. Does something mediocre? Um, yeah, so they actually allow you now to use your Xbox 360 as a cable box. So instead of having that ugly cable box that all cable providers give you, you can just use your Xbox 360 instead. And moving on to the next story, <laughs> Google is now giving us HD Hangouts. Yes. That's right, you can broadcast your Hangout and watch them in 720p. That is good. That's so kind of like see... pseudo HD. Pseudo HD, yeah. But it's what we broadcast in. Well, you you might see some in advancements in your Hangouts if you use them on a regular basis. So pay attention to that and uh, good luck and have fun with it. That's right. Moving on, um, you know, if our flood at the office at the studio had been any worse, like some natural disasters, mm -hmm. most uh, all natural disasters, um, this would have been actually very handy. The solar power generator. I just blinded myself by looking at the reflector behind the camera. Yeah, there's a big bright reflector <laughs> over there. Um, no, it's okay. Now it's, it's pointing at me. You, Thanks, Pablo. Yeah, do what you need to do. I just looked right at it. Um, so this is $2,000. The generator has a 1,250-watt battery, and it'll provide you juice for your fridge up to two days. So if you're in kind of an area that uh, natural disasters occur, and by the way, a service just came out. I forget what it's called. Maybe you guys can chime in in the chat room. A service just came out like last week that uh, allowed you to, when you're thinking about moving, gauge flooding <laughs> and oh, yeah? other disasters and whether you should actually move there or not. So nice. that's a good service to Is look that kind of like the service that shows you if there's a pedophile in your uh, neighborhood yeah, you want to go to? Something like that. Did they combine those two? That I would don't be really good because, so. like, natural disasters and pedophiles, <laughs> yeah. those are two things you'd like to avoid in most instances. Right. <laughs> Uh, All yeah. right. Uh, you got anything else? I was going to say something and I completely forgot. Probably because I'm in the pool, so uh, just I don't even really remember. And having fun. Yeah, here. Is it cold? No. Okay. It feels good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to go to commercial break and. Is it come unboxing right back. time yet? No, but we're going to have unboxing time, definitely. I know we're in a pool, but we will still have unboxing time. All right, you guys, uh, head on over to geekbeat.tv slash fame spot to answer the question of the day. Can you swim? I hope so. Hey gang, welcome back to Geek Beat Live in the pool coverage. Yes, we're having fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this odd show. <laughs> I think we should start. I think it's doing. It's going well though. I think we should start bringing you round the round the clock live coverage from the pool. What do you think? I think that sounds good. I would like to be by the pool constantly. I, I like the water. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So, um, in science news... It's like your second favorite time of the day, science It time. is. And then we have my favorite time of the day, robots, later. Yep. I get robots this week. All right. Tell us about... All right. Tell us about the scientific stuff that happened this week. So, NASA's um, Kepler telescope, which has been going out in search of all sorts of exoplanets kind of outside of this this world that we live in, uh -huh. um, they have been looking for planets that might be inhabitable in case we ever need to leave Earth. They're never going to find my home planet, but it's okay. <laughs> so um, they have like 3,500 possibilities. They have identified 135, not necessarily that are inhabitable, just planets uh -huh. uh, that are possibilities. Um, anyway, so Kepler actually lost two of its wheels, two of its feet, uh, the gyroscopic the gyroscopic feet that it uses to land and to adjust and, and do its thing. So no more landing. They can't. So well, it, has, it has like four feet. It needs three technically, to, to function. Technically, it could land one more time. One more time. But they've brought it back to Earth to, to work on, and they've been working on it, trying to fix it. Oh, they're well, going to fix it? No, that's the thing. They've been trying to fix it, but it's not working out. It's going to cost too much. So How are they? You mean it's here it on it's, the planet Earth? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, I, me. I think so. 
So they're going to junk it. That's my understanding. They're going to junk it, but they're going to try and figure out exactly what they can do with all the parts and maybe make a better one later in the future because this is necessary information that Kepler is is getting for us. Because you know? when we need to evacuate the planet exactly. because of the big robot zombie Have invasion. Have you not watched the summer movies? Have you not watched Geek Beat Live? <laughs> If you have, you will know there's a robot invasion coming, <laughs> and the zombies are right behind them. So Tess is Kepler's replacement, and uh, it's expected to launch in 2017. So okay. look out for that in a few years, if you remember, but put it on your calendar. Right. Okay. What's next on the news? <laughs> All right. Um, so this is very interesting. Uh, or scary. I'm not sure which. You're probably going to find it scary. So two scientists have actually figured out how to control each other. Um, they're at the University of Washington, and Dr. Rajesh Rao, Rao, um, I'm probably butchering that. Rajesh. He's a neurosci neuroscientist. He um, sat in one room, mm -hmm. and basically he wore a an electroencephal... In Encephalography hat, <laughs> which basically uh, monitors his neural activity. A snuffleupagus hat? While he's wearing this hat, he's sitting there looking, just looking at a game that where the computer launched kind of like a missile at a target. Uh -huh. So then he, he doesn't move a muscle. He thinks, shoot, shoot, that, shoot that target, right? Uh -huh. Shoot that missile. And then... Um, the guy in the other room, the other scientist, he actually moves his hand to hit the fire button, not knowing that that's what the He's other guy do. thought. So oh, I see. very interesting possibilities hmm. here. So what um, you're telling me is that It's been successful in mice, now it's successful in humans. So the scientists are working out ways to turn us all into meat puppets. Correct. Excellent. That's wonderful. <laughs> that's pretty that's, much what I'm saying. That's exactly what we needed. Just what we needed. We had some bad They're stories. They're going to program this week. the robots with that information, I hope, right? Well, of course. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, there were some hacking stories this week. Oh, we did have some hacking yeah, stories. I was Let hoping me... for your insight on this one, John. The uh, OCL Hashcat Plus. Oh, yeah. Okay. You want to tell everybody? Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Uh, so here's While the deal. I situate myself. You go right ahead. So here's the deal. You know, I, I've, I've told you guys about how dangerous and scary the world can be in the past because- Do you like to scare people? I do, I love to, I love to scare you. Uh, and I like to tell you about what it would take, for example, if somebody were to launch computers against a list of passwords, even if they're encrypted, it doesn't take that long to, you know, hack them. Right. However, there's a brand new free tool available for all of you to download. <laughs> and it is, it is now capable of cracking, let me see, let me see. Uh, I don't, we don't have it in the notes here. What? But what it's capable for? of processing, I think something like oh, eight like, billion yeah. password combinations per second. Now, why would you care about that? Well, here's why you would care. You remember how over the last like three or four years, there have been all these times when big databases of passwords have been leaked, but they say, well, you don't really have to worry because the password itself wasn't fully compromised. It's still encrypted and all. It's just like the hash. Yeah, you, guess what? Now all you have to do is go download one of those big old databases with millions and tens of yeah. millions of these passwords in it and hook your computer up to a bunch of other computers and let them go at it. They'll have your password in a few hours. Literally, this application allows them to string together. That is not good. It uses GPUs, not CPUs, graphics processing right. cards, and it can use like 128 GPUs simultaneously to just go at it. Wow. So that means if you've ever had a password in your life, you should probably change it. And <laughs> keep in mind that they already have databases of hacked passwords that are over 14 million passwords in the database. That's the first ones they'll try. Yeah, of okay? course. So you need something that's wildly crazier than anything ever invented. Oh, 
And in case you thought, well, I'll just make it really, really long. No, because this new hack password thingy, it will do up to 55 character long passwords. Ooh. So essentially- The so phrases are out. You're all screwed. <laughs> That's what I have to tell you. All oh. right, well, uh, you are also screwed if you don't upgrade to iOS 7 and 10.9 uh, on OS 10. Yeah, this is the greatest thing of all time. Right. Because so. now if you are a Mac user, like for example, we're both using our little iPads here. Yeah, I've got if, my iPad. If somebody were to just type in this one phrase into our, our GeekBeat chat room while we're watching it, it would crash both of these iPads just displaying this string of Arabic characters. Can you believe that? I thought you had to enter it from the device. No. Oh. If, if you pull up Okay, a don't screen, anyone copy this. Don't show this. If you what put, are we doing showing it? If you put this thing on a web page and anyone with with an iPad or a Mac running the current OS versions just loads the page, crash. It's crash-tastic. Nice. It's magically crash-tastic. And apparently it's been running this way for six months and Apple has declined to create a fix for it. Way to go, Steve Jobs. <laughs> Steve Jobs isn't, oh boy. He should have fixed it. He's screwing right. us from the grave. I mean, seriously. <laughs> let's not Let's not go there. Um. <laughs> True or false, iOS 6 and, uh, and uh, Mac OS 10 were his latest uh, inventions. It's true. All right, guys, we're going to go to commercial break. I'm going to readjust myself, and you guys are going to go get some popcorn and then join us back right, right. here on TV Live. See you soon. Hey, guys, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. It is Friday in the pool. We uh, were just discussing uh, during the break that we don't have any margaritas or steaks on the grill. I don't know why, John. Don't blame me. Don't blame me this for that. This is your house. Shouldn't you be uh, pampering us? <sighs> that is just not right. <laughs> just not right. All right, well, I You know what I did? I splashed my tablet and the water so? and stuff came all in contact and took me off of the run sheet. Oh no! <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm That's back. That's okay because it's robot time. Oh, then and, I don't need a robot. I don't need it because it's your turn. For that. It's your turn. I'm come. I come after that. <laughs> the most awesome segment of the show is coming up. Right now. After hers. <laughs> so uh, Nissan actually has promised. Wait, Nissan, the car company. Correct. Uh, they... Are you stealing one of my stories? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, she's stealing one of my stories. Fine, go ahead. So, Nissan is actually promising to turn the base of a Nissan Leaf, kind of switch it up, and make it into a selfless, or a driverless uh, car. And is it selfless also? It is selfless as well. Okay. And they are going to have these on market by 2020. So, in another seven years? It's That's actually not years. very long. Wait, you're telling me that Nissan... Uh, what year is it? What year It's 2013. Is it? <laughs> you're telling me that Nissan actually plans to have driverless cars in seven years. Correct. I'll believe it when I see it. So they say that they will have these on market, ready to go. And, you know, the uh, whole thing is, is a lot of states don't yet have laws in place. Yeah, they're going to have a... I think that they're hoping to get these out into the market before laws start coming up. I don't so, know. So what you're saying is that Nissan is seven years behind Google. <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, is Google, I mean, a lot of people will go there, but Google... Yes, they're testing the technology and they're doing all this stuff, but they don't manufacture cars. Yeah, they it's not still built into have anything. to work with cars in order to make these these uh, the, a reality. They have to take their little robot and integrate it with a car. And yeah. right now they're using like Priuses or something. Right. They're Who kind wants of packing a Prius? it together. I'm just kidding. So, Dave Peterson? I'm just kidding. So, so you're saying owners. that we're going to have Johnny Cabs all over the place. That would be awesome. Johnny Cabs. You're Do you know what we're talking Johnny about? No. That is from the original... Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I haven't seen that. You're in a Johnny Cap. Oh, yeah, I forgot. She's seen the new one, but she hasn't yeah. seen the original. Okay. I watched the new one. I was like, I don't know if I should watch this without seeing the, the original. All right, but so I did, and it worked. It was okay. So uh, Nissan is going to try and circumvent the law by beating the law, by beating their product, beating it to, with Hopefully. their products to market. And all the sensors will be 
integrated into the car itself as opposed to like what, you know, Google is doing. Okay, what's also, next? Also, Curiosity has gotten smarter. So, Curiosity, the Mars Curiosity Rover. Curiosity 63? Uh, no. <laughs> Nick has also gotten smarter He's as also well. gotten smarter. He adopted a baby seal. Did he really? It, like Calliope. Calio- Calliopus, I think. Calliopolis or something. Yeah, yeah, it was so cute. That's awesome. Anyway, um, so it got more robotic. It has made a, it has traveled the surface of Mars on its own, all autonomously, without the help of NASA, because NASA couldn't actually get their eyes on this piece of crater, this land, um, and... Basically, so Curiosity had to do it all himself, and he did a fantastic job. So what you're telling us is that NASA actually invented the driverless car? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that Makes sounds sense. like a good uh, solution. Makes sense. To the, yep, all right. What else? I, that's all I have today, yes. actually. Yes, yes, excellent. That's it is excellent. your time. I can't believe you didn't even tell us about any robots that were going to kill us or anything like that. I know, I just kind of went, I kind of went easy to, I didn't want, you know, robots getting in the pool and yeah. then yeah. they would be all uh, fried, actually. Okay. Well, speaking of Nissan, we're not going to move on from Nissan. Because, oh, we're not. No, we're not. You guys probably know I own a Nissan. Yes. I have a big old Nissan Titan pickup truck. You've seen it in the videos when we drive to New York and we pull that big old trailer. Mm -hmm. And you know what, to be honest, when you pull the trailer, you can't even feel it. It's literally like, is there something behind me? In fact, I've almost changed lanes with like the trailer behind me accidentally before, Thinking, like with, oh, no, no. with somebody there be like, oops, I forgot I have a trailer back there. That's good to know. I will not be driving with you anymore when, you're, right. when you have the trailer. The hitched. reason why is because that car is awesome. Anyway, Nissan has another uh, model called the Patrol and it just broke a record. Do we have a video of this, Dave? Oh. Look at this. Wait, the is Nissan, that a Nissan listen, hauling a plane? The Nissan Patrol broke the record when it towed a 340,000 pound loaded Russian IL-76 cargo plane in the Middle East. It pulled the plane about 100 feet for a new That's Guinness, all it can do? Guinness World Record. <laughs> That's all it can do. <laughs> it broke a world record. <laughs> Well, okay, folks, that truck is the cousin to my Nissan Titan uh, slash... I have a spider on me. Slash on. the Armada. There we go. <laughs> well, you can just splash it right off of you. I'm trying to hold myself and, in spot. And, uh, you know, that truck has 400 horsepower, 417 pound-feet of torque. And you can get the luxury version of it here in the U.S. It's known as the Infinity Q80. Okay. So, yeah. Go get you one, QX80, cool. sorry, QX80. Okay, now there is a new, speaking of being in the water, high-tech submarine made of carbon fiber. Whoa. Now what's really? so cool about it is it's not just a little piece of carbon fiber. You know, we saw how, we saw how to, oh, we didn't, we have not yet, oh, we have a special carbon fiber episode coming up. Came out today? Oh, did it? Okay, well, for those of you who saw it, uh, For we those showed of you who are paying you, attention right on the dime. We showed you how carbon fiber is worked with, mm -hmm. but that was just little pieces of it. This right. is seven inch thick hull. Wow. And this thing is good to go down almost 10,000 feet deep. It can hold five people underwater for up to eight hours. Well, I mean, it could hold them underwater for a lot longer than eight <laughs> hours. It's just, you might as well leave it down there if you do. Right. Okay. So, wow. So it must be super light. It is much, much lighter than a steel sub, which is cool. But what's also impressive is they're working on another version of it that can go down to 20,000 feet deep. Whoa. And... Uh, they're gonna have that available in 2016. Wow. Mental note, I need to move my spaceship because I in don't want them to. You're okay, gonna, yeah. yeah. All right. So, moving right along, you know what's always nice when you're on vacation and you're in the water or you're at the beach and you're just sitting a there, that you a didn't margarita, get me? and you're enjoying the sun, and all of a sudden a gigantic Russian hovercraft comes up on the beach and interrupts your entire thing. <laughs> Your entire vacation. To be honest, Wait, okay? what the? Look, there were a bunch of people whining about the fact that the Russian military went on maneuvers and came on this beach that was totally full of people, even though the Russians claimed that this beach is clearly in military land and those people shouldn't have been on the beach uh -huh. anyway. But the driver, the Russian driver was like, uh, the captain was probably like, the navigator was like, oh, 
Captain, there are many people on the beach. And then the captain was like, screw them, we are Russian. But wait, wait, go back to this video because- In Mother Russia, me. hovercraft land on you. <laughs> it looked to me like there was, it was actually coming up on the beach. It did, that's what I'm telling but you. There I were know, hundreds I'm, of people on I'm the beach. I'm wondering because it didn't actually, like, it, I almost wonder if there's kind of like an inlet there. What I am telling you is did there they, was there they, was nothing but a beach. I don't see people scrambling. Yeah, because they're Russian. They're like in Mother Russia, hovercraft land on you. Never they mind, you don't still, get it. They would still scramble out of the way. They don't. They're Russian. They're not scared of anything. Okay, that's the cool thing. We have Russians in the chat room right, right now. All right, they guys, were, tell us. They were you on that out beach. Out of the way or not? No. Why do you think I was asking if you could swim? Because you gotta know, <laughs> at any time, a giant Russian hovercraft could come right where you are, and you gotta get out the way. Right. Okay. Speaking of getting out the way, we're getting out of the way ourselves. We're gonna take a quick commercial break. We're gonna come back, and we're gonna figure out a way to do unboxings in the pool. And be sure to answer that fame spot question. Can you swim and would you get out of the way of hovercraft game? I I'm would. just adding to it. TV slash fame spot. I bet the neighbors are digging the fact that we're blasting our music through the neighborhood here. You blast your music anyway, right? That's true, I do. What's different about this? It's just in and out. Nothing really different. Well, yeah. Nothing really different. I had to put my sunglasses on because um, it's kind of brighter over here. Because the reflectors are like yeah. really, really bright, you know? Wow. Even though we're in the shade. We thought we were going to be in the shade and just... I was like, I won't need sunglasses. But then Ken <laughs> pulled out all the reflectors. All right, so we actually have some unboxings. We're using the paddleboard to as our as our table, and pretty useful for that. John is going to keep that knife very much clear from my board. He's not going to drop it. He's not going to hit it on accident. Okay. <laughs> All right, ready? First things first. Yeah, let's. Uh, okay. That one's compact and. It says, "Where am I? Where's my clip right there? Oh, okay. Right there." Um, so it says, never be frayed again. Never be frayed. Yeah. Like afraid. Afraid, yeah. Never be afraid, afraid again. again. All right, what do we have here? Oh, I know what that is. This is pretty awesome looking, actually. So this little Look. device, you attach it to your plug. Um, this is your this is for plug. Mac users. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys, Mac users have these big white square kind of power bricks that have a cable that comes out with a magnetic attachment at one end. And I'll be damned if I have like every one of those power bricks ever, the little cable after you use it for a while starts fraying. Mine and doesn't. It comes Oh, yours have too. Uh, have they? Yes, they have. I just hand have. them off to you and That's say, these right. are yours? That's right. Uh -huh. They come apart. <laughs> and normally what you have to do is throw them away. Yeah. And like if you have an 85 watt one, they're like $89. Yeah, they're expensive. They're not cheap. Well, guess what this is? A solution for that. What is and it looks like um, they only cost like $10. It's 10 bucks. So what happens is, and it comes with a kit that shows you how to do it, and there's some little parts and things, but as I understand it, you feed your power cable through this little piece. It You gotta kind of do some stuff to get it through there, yeah. but you feed it through there, and then, then you've got the cord through here, and then this thing acts uh, as a new kind of yeah. base for that cable to, so to with never... strain relief and stuff, so it doesn't uh, disconnect right. and you why don't, don't you get- hold, Why don't you hold it down on the board, John? Oh, and you don't get like uh, shocked and whatnot. Nice. And it's 10 bucks. That's awesome. The Actually, Fray I think Fix. I saw- Thefrayfix.com. Thefrayfix.com. Uh, That's no. a lot cheaper than a $90 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, adapter. Exactly. I think I saw that it was actually on sale like today. Really? Like five bucks or something. Like five bucks? Off or something. Yeah. Wow. Okay, guys. So we're gonna, I, I actually really want to try this out. Is it right there, Dave? Geekbeat.tv forward slash 109 or something? Live yeah, 109? Live 109. There you go. All right. Go okay, cool. Out. Move that one. That one is going Over to there. Off. She want, this way or that way? Which, which, you. okay. I did the first one. Okay, we'll take this box right here now. All right, what do we have? Let's see what we got. We have got a bag of oh goodies. Ah, you know what? This is from Munitio. Ooh, I love those guys. Can we uh, talk to them at... It's TV? about time. <laughs> These are the guys that make the bullet nine millimeter 
earbuds. Mm -hmm. I gave them a uh, did, editor's choice, that. if I recall. Yes, Dave's been waiting. He wants to play with these. These are the Mun Munitio Pro 40 40s. high performance headphones. If I remember correctly from CE Week, these things were very comfortable and looked good, well made. Uh, so I, yeah, I think all of us are looking forward to kind of trying them out. Yeah, but Dave's gonna steal them. Dave soon is gonna as, steal oh, them. Oh, look at this. Look at nice that. Nice unboxing okay. experience. Yep, so you unbox Black this. You got a nice black case here. Munitio does cool they stuff. They really do. Cool stuff. Okay, let's open that up. And there we go. Ooh. Wow, they are really, really nice. They're very soft. A very feel, soft feel that right leather. Here. Okay, oh, don't get them wet. Wow. Yeah, that's a, wet. Rubbery kind of, <laughs> that's a rubbery kind of piece there. And these just slide down. Nice. Dave's big head, he has to slide them all the way down. All right. <laughs> yeah. But for me, because it's kind of medium sized, be about like. Oh, yeah. How Those are nice. They feel good. Nice. Just the right amount of grip without like yeah. squeezing your head like a grape, but uh, it's perfect. And they're so, like fully over ear? Yeah, they are. I like them over ear. So that's uh, the Munitio. I'm not going to put them on because I have wet hair. Yeah, so don't do I it. I will avoid that. And, uh, but I will try them on later. All right, what do you got for the next box? All right, let's see. Over here, I have a box. Let's see, there's a box and a box, which is always a good sign. Throw that over here. There's the box. It's black and white. Oh, nude audio. Nude audio. <gasps> I whacked a microphone. I think I remember. There you go. Uh, I think I remember actually seeing something like well, this. Well, first of all, I now. like the name right off the bat. I'm sure you do. Look at this cool box. It's all green inside. And it says nude audio. Oh, nice. This looks oh, like what a, is a, it? A, it's a portable Bluetooth speaker. Cool, the nude but, move. Here, open that. Um, what I liked about the look of these was um, they're kind of portable in the sense that you can you have it. They have a string on them, like a little rope, so you can kind it's of like swing speaker it on around. a rope. You could throw it on your hip, you know, tie it around your belt loops, and just kind of take it on the go. It's like soap it's, on a rope, it's only very musical. Small, yeah. That's it's cool. Nice. Is it it's waterproof? Rubber, um, let's not test it. Before it's it's all fine. it's kind of rubberized. It's good looking. I don't see the, that it says. Look, the loops. buttons are, seem like they're sealed up and stuff. I do. I don't see waterproof though. I mean, it's it looks like soap on a rope. Why can't you take it in the shower with you? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but it does it look. Is, good. It, it is, feels it good looks too. Looks good. It feels good. I I'm I can't wait to hear if it sounds good. Okay. We'll test that out and we'll let you guys know as always. Nude audio. Yes. How much is it? You guys in the chat room, you it's guys the let us know. Nude Audio M. How much is it? I wonder how much is it? All right, I don't know how. I, I would like to apologize to my friends at Elite Screens for nearly forgetting the most important unboxing of the day. I'm not kidding, I'm excited about this. This is a brand new. I can't wait to see this. This is gonna be badass. This is a brand new projection screen. This goes outside, which what? is even better because what a you bunch can of have rebels. like a pool party. That's right. That is honestly what this is designed for. Okay. Here, let me. Uh... Is it going to be allowed on your on your yes. precious yes. board now? Yes. I want now? it on my board. Here okay. we go. I don't know what this is. I well, think this, this is actually. Like the... I think that's actually the screen part. Oh really? Wow. This part is heavy. How Those much? Those are the rods. How much did you say your board can hold? Two forty. All right. You're fine. You're hitting the mic. I know. I'm whacking the mic. Ugh. There you go. Under that. Okay, there we go. Uh, John, they want to know if you're wearing socks in the pool. Socks? No, it's my white feet. <laughs> so you can see this. Uh, this part is is softer. Yep. So we're gonna have wow. to. We're, gonna, we're we not gonna be able to pool? unroll the whole thing in the pool here, guys. But this is the screen. Okay, so yep. let's set that over aside there. right over here. And then here, I'll and then, unzip this yeah. from over here. The whole thing is designed to be able to be carried with you. Oh, it's right here. Just take it to the park, okay? So unzip that thing all the way around. It's this over there. zips all the way around. Okay, and now if oh, we fold wow, this back. This is awesome. Yeah, fold it back. Here we go. Maybe we should turn the board this yeah. way so they can see. 
So it's all packaged so that it stays secure and it's not fum it's not like flopping around in there as you're carrying it from your house to the park or to the pool or wherever. And I'm imagining that is cool. I'm imagining look at all this hardware. Wow. Stakes to hold the, the, the thing down because you stake it up outside. You've got rope. Rope to secure it, poles to hold it up. Wow. And then we've got you know, we've got that carrier and we've got the uh, uh, the screen itself. So I think you probably put that in the carrier and you can stick those in the middle of oh, this bag yes. and just pick up the bag and, go. and take it anywhere you want. That is brilliant. So we're gonna do a very special episode with this yep. and we're gonna show you guys some stuff. And in fact, if you're here local in Dallas or if you can be local in Dallas, yep. maybe we should make a big deal out I of it. and we just should. We just have, have a big, big party. party. A big outdoor party. We'll show a movie on the screen somewhere. You'll be in an episode of Geek Beat. What we'll do, do the think? review on the product. What do you think about that? You guys want that? Yeah, let us know if you think that'd be cool. Now, we have actually finished all of our unboxings. So yeah. thank you to our friends over at Elite Screens. Yes. Thank you to all of you guys for watching. I guess we should wrap up the show. We should. All right, we will uh, see you guys around the chat room all week long and we'll see you later. All right, bye guys, see you later. Bye.